Hello everyone, I'm Trusting44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Blades of Avernum. Last episode, we found our way into the Rebels' encampment. And it turns out Sir Kelly, the mage at, at the fortress, was actually a rebel this whole time. And it seems like she actually helped develop the explosives that they used. Possibly with the package we delivered. Wonderful. Either way, it's time to head out into here. The passage you were in abruptly opens into a clearing of sorts. Looking up, you can actually see the sky. It must have taken thousands of years for this little clearing to form, and looking north you can see a fairly decent-sized waterfall. That's probably what carved this all out. You take more time to think about it, but you can smell smoke and hear low muttering. There must be more rebels nearby. Yep, these are more of the explosives. The water in this stream is almost disturbingly clear and incredibly cold. Looking to the east, you think you can see the stream fall away into the rock. The stream is quite a bit of water, actually. The current would sweep you away in an instant if you were to jump in. There's also a passage leading back into the rock off to the west. Okay, then. As the passage slopes up, you hear the sound of the fall starts to pick up again. You also hear what sounds like wood being dragged across rocky ground. Maybe you can finally figure out what's going on here. Now you can hear someone muttering to themselves. Deciding that now is probably the best time to act, you cautiously draw a weapon and approach. In the half second that you take to glimpse this beautiful cavern, you see huge cascades of water pouring into this little lake. It flows off to the east and west, but you can't be sure where it leads. Come to think of it, you're not sure where you are anymore. But these aren't the main falls, you're sure of it. But now the falls don't catch your eye. You're too busy staring at the lone rebel in the cavern. And something about the air here reminds you of the Empire Lab. You can't quite put your finger on it. So you've arrived, and just in time, like the heroes always do. I suppose you'll want to know what I've been doing here. Then you see it. It's Joshua, the strange man you saw on the Pearl Bridge. While his cryptic message makes a bit more sense now, it's not as if his friends were that much trouble to dispose of. But it does beg the question, how did he escape you so easily before? Yes, tell us. Well... As I'm sure you've, as you've surely figured out by now, it was none other than myself and my late colleagues who leveled the town of Hectos. We had bigger ambitions, though. You see, we are unlike those pitiful rebels who are content to strike once and melt away into the shadows. We will not go quietly into the Empire's night until we make it our own. He gestures up at the falls behind him. You see these? Most of their flow is channeled back down into the earth. However, some of it feeds the main falls. So we thought... If we burn Hectos to the ground, we might as well put out the fire. We'll flood the town and the fort if we can. Another sweeping gesture, this time towards the crates that litter the ground. And these? More explosives, to seal up this cavern and redirect the water. They're already armed, and so are the others that we planted. They're going to go off no matter what, my friends. He grins widely. Oh, and I almost forgot to thank you for your help. That package you delivered was just what we needed to finish the detonators for this batch of explosives. Enough. You see, that won't happen if I kill you first. You're angry at me? Wonderful. That will make killing you so much easier. You see, you can't stop me once I get these crates into the water. At first, you think you've been yelling at an illusion, but then you hear his voice. Then I shall win. And now you will die, friends. Well, at least that explains how Joshua got away from you before. Ah, there he is. <coughs> okay, gotta reload. Alright, let's try this again, but this time... This time we'll be hasted, so we have more of a chance. Yes, yes. We'd like to know what you're doing here. We know your intention is to make this whole thing explode and flood the entire valley. There we are. Can't really 
do much else, so... Very low chance to hit this guy, which is really a bother. I doubt that's actually gonna help. really already wear off. Well, I hit him once. <coughs> God damn it, gotta reload again. Alright, let's try this again. Fortunately, once again, we know there's one thing here. Just to ensure things go right. And here we go. That strength potion should help out a lot with actually smacking him. Come on, come on. Long cutscene. Let's get this over with. cast anything with you. Nobody else really has a chance of hitting him. There, we hit him once. Yeah, I can't even shoot him or anything. Joshua reappears abruptly, clutching his wounds. He staggers momentarily and drops his sword. He feebly tries to heft his bow like a club. So you've won for now, but you can't win forever. There will be others like me. With that said, he lets loose an almost unearthly roar, as if the sheer force of his voice will detonate the explosives. He moves to strike you with the raised bow, but he simply falls to the ground. A few twitches later, he stops breathing. Okay then, good. We dropped blessed arrows, a blessed bow, an unidentified ring, a flaming sword, and steel studded armor. Actually, I think that flaming sword would be very useful. 5 to 30? Oh, heck yes. And regenerates health. God, yes. I mean, the steel short sword isn't as useful. No, it's better than this. And blessed bow, better than the U bow. Bitch. Gonna go to you. <laughs> you to you. Okay. You wisely climb into the boat, unwilling to risk being trapped by a cave-in. After all, some of these explosives could still go off and they'd probably kill you. You can see two ways out of this. You can try to cast a westward flow, which will probably take you out onto the main falls. Of course, there's always the eastern flow, which goes. Well, you're not sure where. Wherever it is, it's less likely to, likely to explode than where you are now. I'm going to save before I go somewhere. Alright. Oh, damn it. What the? Did I really just screw myself over here? God damn it. Hold on. As you begin to head back down towards the clearing, you reconsider the situation. The explosives are still here, and even though they won't be enough to flood the valley, they can still explode and trap you in the cave. So perhaps this isn't the best way to leave. Do you want to try to leave this way? Well, I don't really have a choice now. You don't make it very far until you hear a loud rumble, accompanied shortly after by the sound of huge sharp rocks crushing you to death. The explosives might not have been powerful enough to flood the valley, but they were definitely powerful enough to take care of you. 
Okay. So now I need to go through that fight again, and this time not use the boat until after. Reloading. Okay, finally made it back. Jeez, that fight is annoying. Anyway. As it said there. I think I'll try the eastern flow, because we don't know where it's going to go. So, flow, paddle east. The current picks up quickly, and you feel the boat being dragged out of the cavern. The tunnel ahead of you is pitch black. Your boat rockets down the tunnel, gets whipped around a corner, and is thrown over a small waterfall. For a second, you can glimpse the clearing you passed through earlier. Before you can brace yourself, the boat falls away beneath you, and you realize that you're falling down a rather long waterfall. The boat hits the water shortly before you do, and you promptly lose consciousness. You awake, groggy, soaked, and aching. You're on dry land, which is a good start. You have no idea where you are, which is bad. Then you notice Mitch standing over you. Definitely a good sign. You think you can see a man in a green cloak off behind Mitch, but you could be wrong. In any case, you look again, and he's gone. Before you can say anything, Mitch speaks. Good, you're awake. I was getting worried that you wouldn't wake up. But now that I know you're alive, I can finally get going. He helps you off off the ground, and he walks, or rather limps, away slowly. As he leaves, you hear him call back, Good luck, friends! Wait for me, brother! Looking around in more detail, you're starting to get a good idea of where he washed up. You can see a well-stoked fire along with a decidedly ramshackle building. Looking out across the lake, you see... Hectos! So you're not as lost as you thought. Ah, this is that hut we found before. I know where this is. Still a little weak on your feet, you leave the abandoned camp, hell-bent on getting some sort of reward for your work. As you pass the Feral Bridge, you're pleased to see that the water level hasn't changed all that much. Looks like you actually managed to foil Joshua's plan and survive. When you reach Hectos, you are greeted by the ecstatic survivors. They can't exactly give you much of a reward, however, so you graciously decline the small sums they offer. When you reach Fort Galima, the guards give you a full salute, accented by rather rusty and out-of-tune trumpets. But the real prize is when Commander Alyssa gra congratulates you with actual sincerity. She presents you with a beautiful longsword and a hefty pouch of money. Not the best reward, but pretty good considering what their armory looked like. Once the ceremony ends, you quietly slip out of the fort and hit the open road again, satisfied with the job you did. It's quiet out here again, which is a nice reward. It's, which is a nice enough reward in itself. And that's the end of that scenario. That was actually quite interesting. Sure, we got caught up in a whole thing, and I admit Joshua being a rebel, yeah, that made sense. I didn't expect. I I kind of had a feeling from the start that that package we delivered was going to be involved in it. Interesting that they didn't actually mention that until, like, the end of everything. Still, that scenario wasn't too bad. Next episode, we'll move on to another scenario by the Cephestos guy. I am quite curious to see what the end result will be. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Chester44, that is Fox, Sheik, Bonnie, and Draco. This has been a Blades of Avernum Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.